For more on the latest on the pandemic and global vaccine distribution, let's bring in Dr. Didi Narukar from Boston. She's a physician and lecturer on global health and social medicine at the Harvard Medical School. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, the, the majority of the world vaccines have gone into arms in less than a dozen countries. Why is that a problem? It's a problem because we really need to push for global vaccine equity. You know, the goal is to vaccinate 70% of the world's population by September 2022. And right now, the way we're looking, it seems that the lowest income countries will not get vaccines until the year 2023. So that's absolutely unacceptable. We know that the U.S. has committed during this summit has committed 500 million additional doses for a total of 1.1 billion doses. The EU has committed 250 million additional doses for a total of 550 uh, million. And we know that China has a total commitment of 2 billion, but that's not enough. We need 6 billion at the least to really bring vaccines to the world. Yeah, you know, everyone's looking to the U.S., to the EU, and to China to lead the global response, but is there something other countries can also be doing? Yes, of course. This has to be a unified multinational effort. We've been talking about removing patents and, you know, giving waivers to places like India and other places that are really ramping up vaccine production. We can work on raw materials and equipment and bolstering those globally as well. Can countries like the U.S. support the global push for vaccines and at the same time, sort of in a parallel policy, embrace booster shots for uh, those already vaccinated amongst their populations? You know, Rui, this is very interesting, the question that you pose, because many people say, no, it, it has to be one or the other. I don't believe so. I think it doesn't have to be either or. We can do both. We do need to have one of the greatest lessons that we learned today during the summit is that we need greater coordination between the public and the private sector globally and a unified multinational effort. This isn't going to happen on its own just with the U.S. We do need the entire world involved. Uh, speaking of global cooperation, this week the U.S. relaxed travel restrictions for inbound international passengers. Uh, it came after uh, tension with some of its allies. Was this the right call, the right time? It's absolutely the right call. We are pushing the medical community to have these restrictions and rather proof of vaccination even for domestic travel. We know that now we are requiring in the U.S. proof of vaccination. It is limiting to those who are in other countries who don't have access to vaccines, like we talked about. We're also making a push here in the U.S. to increase testing for foreign nationals and unvaccinated U.S. nationals returning back to the U.S., and a push to increase contact tracing with the CDC and other airlines. So this is all very positive. It's a step in the right direction to mitigate the impact of the virus. Very early on, it was said that uh, coronavirus basically highlighted or exacerbated existing uh, problems that were about before coronavirus. One of the issues we've seen in the U.S. and now with proof of vaccinations is a lack of centralized health care, uh, lack of a centralized data system, lack of identification cards. How are we seeing that, that play in and what sort of challenge is that presenting in efforts to have, as you said, proof of vaccination and a consistent policy? You know, what's so interesting is that all of the fault lines that existed, you know, the pre-existing fault lines have widened and the gap is so strong, even in terms of physician burnout and healthcare workers feeling a sense of burnout. All of these things existed before. I think that if we really focus on the end goal, we all have the same goal. We need to focus on eradicating COVID or minimizing and mitigating a lot of the effects. If zero COVID isn't our goal, we really need to focus on the endemic nature of COVID and we need to have a clear path to get there.